recently got a delivery and it came in this awesome box and it's got wooden lid wooden base and these really thick cardboard sides to it and it is such a great box look it is so sturdy that i can sit on it and it takes my great big bulk so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna upcycle this into a storage stall and hopefully make it look really really nice first thing i need to do is get rid of all this tape because i don't want any sticky tape on it because that's gonna make it difficult to paint and difficult to cover and do things with so now i've got that all cleaned up like that what i'm going to do is tape over these joints here because they're not the greatest of butt joints and this way it will make it a lot easier and look a lot nicer once it's finished all i'm using here is painter's tape and this works really really well for this sort of stuff close those joints off a little bit more and anywhere there's a nick like this here i'm also going to put a bit over and here where i was a little bit exuberant about getting into the box in the first place where I got through it because I was desperate to get hold of what I wanted in it and I'm also going to take down the top as well to make that look a little nicer so I can pop a bit of tape on there like that and that'll smooth that off quite well and that lid will still fit on there not a problem because there was a little bit of give in it anyway so now that's all nice and covered i'm happy with that i'm just going to take these extra bits of label off and then i can get on with the next stage that's all ready now i've got everything removed what i've done is i've cut myself out some sheets of brown paper in the same size as that indent there and i'm going to paste those on or glue them on using just a pva and water mixture and i'm going to paste them right up to the top and this is just the brown paper i get from amazon deliveries and things like that and if you've got a heat press and it's all crinkled put it on your heat press for a few seconds and honestly it'll iron it out so flat it works brilliantly I'm putting quite a bit on because if i need to be able to move it then i can and i'm lining that up there pushing that in to each of them now i want this to be smooth normally i put a texture on it but i actually want it to be as smooth as possible on here and then right up to that top make sure i've got that nicely adhered what i'm going to do is just go over it with my little roller here now that will crinkle up a little bit as it dries but i'm not too worried about that and now i'm going to go around and do all the sides like that as well that'll make it much easier for me when i come to decorate it and much easier for me when i come to paint it but while that's drying the box and the paper on it what i've done is i've made these using an ai program literally just put in art deco colorful image but background to images and it came up with these and i love them so i've printed them off on a3 paper using my inkjet printer i've got four i was going to do this, something very different with this but i actually decided i want to keep it for myself in my own living room now i want to seal these and give them a glossy finish because if not when i put them on any little knock and you're going to rip this because it's only just plain paper look and all i'm going to use to seal it is seals and protects then hard so i'm going to give it three coats the first coat i'm going to do quite light just going over it like this let it dry for five minutes and then turn it round like that go over it that way turn it round and then go over it that way these are all nice and dry now and sealed so ready to be put on but before i put them on what i'm going to do is paint this so it's all an even color now i'm not going to use an acrylic paint for this because it cost me a fortune and take me far too long so what i've got is some household brilliant white i think this will do it really well it dry lovely and this is obviously a lot smoother than it was and a lot more secure than it was it's worth taking that time to Put that paper on there i'm going to not only paint the outside but also the inside with this as well and that will give it a nice seal it's all nice and dry now so it means i can start to finish this off and it looks really good in white what i've discovered is these have not been put on square but i'm hardly surprised it's only a packaging box so i will need to make sure that i match each of the new panels to these i've got a tin of gold metallic paint here and i'm going to go round and paint all these corner bits going all the way around now i am going to overlap these because if i do cut 
either of these panels a little bit shorter than what they should be, then you're not going to see it so much against the gold as you would against the white. Now, if I don't think this is covered nice enough and looks good enough, then what I will probably do is just go over it with some gold leaf. But we'll see once it's had two coats and it's dried. And I bought a larger tin because I think it's much more economical than me keep buying tubes of gold paint. While that gold is drying, what I'm going to do is make the stall part. Now I've got myself some foam here. I did have to order this from the internet and this complies with all the fire resistant regulations and everything. And I've also cut myself a square of plywood that is exactly the same size as the top. And I just had some scrap plywood around. Now, I've never done any upholstery work before, so this is all gonna be new to me. I think I'll be all right. I'm not sure even how to cut this foam, but I'm sure I can work it out. What I'm gonna do to start with is mark on here the size that I want. Now, is this too thick to cut with scissors? I think it probably is. Yeah, that is too thick. So what I'm gonna use is just a blade and I'm gonna cut down my line. Oh yeah, that cuts much nicer. Then I think I might ring me mum because she used to do a bit of upholstery many, many years ago and I'm sure she'll be able to tell me roughly what to do over the phone. Well, mum was really, really helpful. She said if I was covering this in leather, I needed to drill a couple of holes in here right the way through so that when you sit on it, the air has somewhere to go. But I'm not, I'm covering it in cloth, so she said I should be all right. She also said just to sand down any real sharp edges that are on this. So it's not tempted to drag through the material. And she also said for somebody like myself who's not really done this before, to tack my foam onto my board. So I'm going to be using some of this instant tack, which I spray on both sides. Let it dry for a few minutes and then I can put them together. And then all I have to do is line this up and push that down. And that should tack on there just enough to hold it, which it has, which is great news. And then she said use a bit of hessian or something or canvas to start with. So I've got this bit, which was I cut out of an old suit bag, if I'm totally honest. One of them bags that you get to protect your suits with. So I'm going to put that in the middle like that. And then she said, pull gently, not too tight, and put a couple of staples in it, like that. And then do the same the other side. Yeah, it looks all right so far. And then bring those corners out like that. And then do that side with the same tension. And then the same tension that side. I just spoke to her again and she said, I've already done it wrong, but not to worry. She said, I should have done each side as I went went along rather than try and do all the sides together and try and line up the staples as well which I'm not doing a very good job of. She also said I should have put some like wadding over the material but I just don't have any and I don't want to wait any longer. So that's as far as she said to go into the corners and she told me how to do the corners as well. She also said I've got too much material not here but on the rest of it so to trim that down a little bit and then how she said to do these corners is to tuck them in like that i may need to remove a staple because i think that one there is too near to allow me to tuck it properly which isn't a problem so yeah that'll give me more room to tuck it so to tuck it like that until i've got a nice corner like that there bring that across there like that and then staple that in there and then that should give me a nice neat corner and then just go round and do that to all the corners so I've gone round, I've done all those corners. The last two were much neater than the first two, so I definitely got better, and that now fits on there. And I've got to do exactly the same with my material. Now this is the material that I've got. I love this material, it's beautiful. So I'm gonna cut myself a bit off, making sure that I've got enough to fold round all the way. And then I'm gonna repeat the same stages that I just did for the lining. Well, look at that. I'm really getting some neat corners, but can you believe it? There's a fault there in the material and I hadn't noticed it before I cut it, so I can't send it back. I have contacted the company and told them because I think they should know, but it really, well, I suppose it is their fault because they should have sent it out without a fault in. But it's as much my fault as it is theirs because 
I should have checked it before I cut it. And I love the material, so no disrespect to them. Fortunately, I did buy myself enough of this material because I wanted to make a lampshade, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that now and match this up, that I can finish it off. Just need to remove this and cut a new bit. These things happen to us crafters. Well, that's finished. I've covered that now. I've done all the corners. And to be honest, I don't think I've made too bad a job of that. I'm really pleased with it. Mum said, yeah, not bad. She'd give me a 6 out of 10 for my first go. And at least this bit now hasn't got a fault in it, which is really, really important because I would have never been able to stop looking at that. Well, before I start to cut these and then mess them up, I, like I said, know that these panels are not all the equal sides. So what I'm going to do is make some patterns first and then put the pattern over the top of the other piece and cut them out once I'm happy that I know they fit perfectly. So all I need to do is lay this on here like that. I want it to go right to the top. I've written one face on that so I know the piece has to be face up and one back on that so I know that that has to be the back of the item. And then all I need to use is something fairly blunt to go around here like this. And all I'm, I'm using a popsicle stick here and then that will put a crease in where I want to cut. Okay, so now if I cut that out using a straight edge ruler, well, all rulers, I suppose, a straight edge, then that should fit in there. And if it doesn't, then I can trim it up a little bit as I go until I've got the actual correct size for it to put in there. Because so I shall be really miffed if I cut one and then mess it up. I mean, I'm still likely to mess it up anyway. But if I cut one and mess it up without trying this method first, and this is just old brown paper. I mean, I won't chuck any of it away because you know me, I'll be using that in something at some point. Now I can check that to see if that fits in there. And look at that, that absolutely fits in there perfectly. Yeah, I'm very pleased with the way that fits in there. And because I've done this overlap, if it is slightly smaller either side, then that isn't a problem. You're not gonna see it because you've got this gold going down here. And then once I've got all these cut out, I can then look at this like this and think, where am I going to put that? I'm going to line that up with the bottom like that. And now I can cut this one out by going along my pattern. And I'm using a nice sharp new blade here as well. And I'm cutting slowly because I don't want to move the ruler and I also don't want to move out really quickly and then mess it up. Because I do have a tendency to go about things like a bull in a china shop. And now that should be the right size to fit in that piece. And all I have to write on there is number one. So now I've got to the nerve wracking bit and that means I've got to put these on. And I don't know why it's nerve wracking because I can always print some more off. I'm going to be using just normal white glue for this. I'm not watering it down or doing anything else to it. I'm just using it neat. And I know which ones I need because I've got them labeled and numbered so they correspond to the right bit. I'm gonna brush a thin layer of this all the way over right up to these edges now this will dry fairly quickly once i put the card down but it's not going to dry really quickly on this paint i don't want too thick a layer because i don't want it to burst out of the sides and the other thing is i don't want it to make the paper wet from underneath even though i've sprayed it on the top I haven't sprayed it underneath so i don't want it to make it wet if i put too much on it's going to do that so that one should be fine now and all I need to do is make sure I've got this up the right way line the base up like that and drop it in all the way around and then I'm going to use this scraper you could use a piece of card or whatever you've got this is my Cricut scraper to gently go over that to make sure it's adhered and then I'm going to also use my roller as well to gently go over it I want to make sure it's really well adhered to that before I turn over and do the next one now, I could put some weight on this as well if I wanted to, but I'm actually not going to. I'm going to let this sit there. Trim that top up when it's all really nice and dry. And I'm just going to take a baby wipe and wipe off any excess glue that I may have got onto this gold that I painted on earlier. And there we go. And now I'm going to carry on, do all of them, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do for the finishing touches. Nearly finished now. This is going in my living room. So what I need to do now is, while that's drying, is attach this to the actual upholstered bit. I'm going to drill some holes to start with, and it's fairly easy to know when you've gone through. And then I'm going to screw this 
into the wooden piece that I used to upholster it with. And in that way, it's not going to go anywhere. And I've made sure that these aren't too long, so when you sit on it, they're not going to stick in your bum. Big thank you to everyone that got me a coffee last month as well. It really does help me to be able to continue making videos on this channel. I love the comments, so please, if you buy me a coffee, the link for that is in the description below. Leave me a comment. I love reading them. And there we go. That's attached on there nicely. That is not going to go anywhere. And that is going to be lovely and comfy now to put your feet on or to sit on. So all we've got to do now is wait for that to dry and then I can finish it off. There's about another 20 minutes work involved in it, that's all. Well, now all that's left is to give this a couple of coats of gloss varnish. This is lovely and dry now. And the gloss varnish will just help protect this finish and give it that bit of shine that I think it needs. And I'm going to be using a brush on gloss varnish for this rather than a spray because I think I'll get a nice thicker finish. And I'm going to try and avoid going over the same areas more than once. There we go. And we can just leave that to dry now and carry on and finish off the other ones. All the other panels. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's completely finished. Well, this is all finished now. I am so pleased with this. I love the way it's come out. And I'm sure it's going to be really comfy. And the great thing about it is it's also an ottoman and um, what a great upcycle rather than putting that in the bin and the great thing is it is really sturdy and it's really strong and i can use it to sit on or put my feet on as well when i'm lounging around and watching television well i hope you've enjoyed this upcycle i've learned quite a lot doing this and i've really enjoyed every minute of it i wish i had 10 more of these boxes to be able to upcycle into different little ottoman stalls boom the like button hit the subscribe button but make sure you check out the video as well that's coming up next which is another great upcycle take care enjoy your crafting bye